Hey guys, it's Wendy Valencia. Kelly from Freedom in a Budget and I started this collab to celebrate Rachel Cruz's Love Your Life Not There book coming out and we are so, so excited. Yay, Ray Ray, so proud of you. Okay, I know, it doesn't matter if I'm proud of her, but I'm excited for the book. In this collab, we're gonna talk about our own personal life experiences with social media and comparing ourselves to others. So I really want you to check out everybody else's collab down below. And also uh, the link for Rachel Cruz's book is also down below, so go check that out. Seriously, before you even consider watching my video, I want you to go to that link down in the uh, detail section. It's the first link, people. Click it. Go buy your book. I'll wait. Just push pause. Go click buy. Come back. And I'll still be here waiting to talk about my own social media realization. For those of you who don't know who Rachel Cruz is, she's Dave Ramsey's daughter, but I'm guessing if you're watching my channel, you know who she is because we're all here because we're Dave Ramsey fans and we're on the Dave Ramsey plan, right? So in celebration, we want to do a collab about our own social media smack in the face. So sit back and enjoy. Well, enjoy might not be the best word for this collab for me personally because it's kind of sad. But um, sit back and listen. I'm going to tell you a story. In 2008, Mauricio and I uh, moved to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and um, this was about the time, I think Facebook was started in like 2004, and in 2008, it was really getting going, and we got on right about then, and absolutely, within a year, everybody we knew was on Facebook. So during this time, a woman actually friended me, and she was so so beautiful and she was a, a friend of a friend of a friend I don't even know how I know her um, we did go to the ch same church but our church there was huge so I don't know that I actually met her at church but I know I met her through friends but she was gorgeous I mean gorgeous perfect figure perfect hair perfect skin she had a huge beautiful house and a nice car and a um, perfect kids I mean all the pictures she posted were perfect I mean Perfect, like manicured perfect. So this was all happening pretty much during the first year of my marriage, which was quite possibly the worst year of my life. We had a house that was a disaster. We were looking at potentially having a lawsuit for fraud when the previous owners and selling us. It was a miserable, miserable year. Mauricio and I were not happy. And um, you're supposed to be happy when you're newlyweds, but I wasn't. I was so completely miserable on the inside that I was looking at these women's posts, this woman's posts, and I was thinking to myself, if I could just have her life, it would be perfect. I would be happy. I traveled in the same social circles as this woman and over, I'd say six or eight months, I actually got to know her and she would have these super lavish parties at her house and I got invited to several of those, Mauricio too, obviously. We would go to these parties and they were beautiful and, and amazing and oh my goodness, this house so gorgeous. She invited me out to dinner a few times and she would always pay because apparently she had money to throw around. I certainly didn't at that time. Um, and I know what you're thinking, ah, Dave Ramsey, she's probably in debt up to her eyeballs. Not this story. I honestly, I, I really don't know the state of her finances, but I'd be willing to bet they were okay. Maybe she had a lot of debt, but I, I think they were fine. The first time I went out to dinner with this woman, we had two bottles of wine between the two of us. I drank one glass. The more we went out, the more I noticed this was kind of a habit for her. She would drink a lot, whatever we were drinking, if it was mixed drinks or wine or whatever, it was usually wine, but sometimes we'd have mixed drinks if we were at a good mixed drink restaurant but there was always a lot of alcohol. The time that she showed up at a church function, 
smelling of alcohol and not just smelling but reeking of alcohol but not actually showing any outward signs of being drunk i knew she was an alcoholic from that time on once i realized that i would look at her facebook posts and they would kind of make my heart hurt they they made me feel really sorry for her because i realized all she really wanted was just to be happy and it was the same thing that I wanted. That moment that she showed up at church pretty much drunk, I realized that I didn't want to turn out like her. Now, being an alcoholic, I probably never would have been, but I could have been miserable my whole life. And so it was that point that I actually decided that I was gonna change my life. I was gonna be happy and I was gonna do whatever it took to get there. And so I started taking the steps I did to make my marriage happier, to make my life happier. I tried to help this woman a lot, actually. I, I, it broke my heart to see what she was doing to herself. But I, I really wanted to help her. I really wanted her to get better, to fix her life, to, to have a happier life than the life she wanted. But there was nothing I could do. You can't help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. You can't make them be better. You can't make them be healthy. And that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to learn in my life. So in the end, I ended up not staying friends with her. And there was no like big dramatic blowout. It just kind of drifted away because she always was drinking and there was always some sort of drama involved with the drinking. And I just didn't want to be a party to that because it caused me internal tension that I did not need to have. And I don't want you to think that I gave up on her because I really truly did not. I did everything I could to help her. But like I said, you can't help somebody that doesn't want to help themselves. So while I was in Mexico, I had remained friends with her on Facebook. Um, I, I always, you know, kept up on what she was posting or whatever. And as it turns out, about a year after we moved to Mexico from Baton Rouge, she passed away. If I remember correctly, she had cirrhosis of the liver, obviously from alcohol and um, she passed away. And I didn't go to her funeral, obviously. We were living in Mexico and um, I hadn't remained friends with her, but I was really sad for her because she never got out of life what she really wanted, which was just to be happy. So sorry for the downer of a story, but it, honestly, it is the best example of when I realized what goes on in social media may not necessarily be what's going on in somebody's life. So if you've ever had an aha moment on social media, put your story down below. I'd love to hear it. And if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button and I will see you soon. See ya.